Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be looking at our seedlings which we fed with some of this liquid fertilizer and we will also be doing an experiment on some of our other Drostra seedlings to see if liquid fertilizer makes them grow quicker or if our fish flakes makes them grow quicker. So let's start the video. Before we get started, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of carnivorous plants. If you think that that is something that will interest you, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos and also click on the notification icon so that YouTube actually tells you when we make videos. And I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. We are on about 850 subscribers which is insane to me as I honestly didn't think that we would get so many people enjoying the videos that I make. So really guys, thank you so, so much for all the support. And I really enjoy making these videos for you guys and talking to everyone in the comments and just giving out advice to everyone. Thank you so, so much. So without further ado, let's start the video. So about six days ago, we fertilized this Drosera Regia. There is one seeding right there and the other one right there. You can't see it because it's covered. But I'll, I'll zoom in on it now. I want to show you guys something that I, that I have. And here is our Drosera Adelaide. Is it coming up? And the other sprout over here. But I'll show you guys them up close in a second. And this is our other pot of Drosera. I have no idea which Drosera it is. But I really do think it is um, Drosera Rotundifolia. Because I got it as mixed, at, at like a mixed packet of Drosera. And I sorted all the seeds, there were some Bernata, some obviously Rotundifolia, different seeds, I just identified them by seeds, but these do look like Rotundifolia. And this is the biggest guy over here, who's is growing his roots like at the ground like that, it's super strange. Oh, kitty cat's busy in the background. But anyway, I have a little magnifying glass, and I've had this magnifying glass actually for a while now. It's just that I have pretty good eyesight. When I look at things up close, my far distance eyesight is shit. That's why I wear glasses. But if I see things up close, I can see them up close really, really well. So for me, seeing these plants up close is super easy. And actually seeing them with the magnifying glass is not as helpful as just looking at them naturally with my own eyes, because I can see them much better by myself. But obviously for you guys and on the camera, it is so much more difficult. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up the camera, put this lens in front of the camera lens, something like this, and I'll try to show you guys our Drosera over here. So let me set this up properly for you guys. Okay guys, and here is our Drosera Adelaide. We will be looking at the Adelaide first, because obviously it's the biggest one, it'll be the easiest to see. And I've zoomed in the camera a little bit. If I zoom in too much, it obviously goes grainy, but let's try zoom in with the magnifying glass so it's not so grainy for you guys. Yeah, that's about, as um, zoomed in it can get. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, the camera obviously, what is the word? Readjusts, the camera readjusts, I don't know. Anyway, you can see there that on the top right, that's the newest, biggest leaf. That one came out about a day or two after we fertilized it. And it hasn't made a new leaf since, it's just been developing that middle one. So that either means that the plant is like, oh my goodness, what the hell's going on? I don't wanna live anymore, or it's like, okay, I have a lot of energy, let's make a really, really big leaf. So I have no idea which one it is right now because only time can tell. You should only fertilize your plants every two weeks, so twice a month, really, if you're if you're fertilizing it with a liquid fertilizer like this. So I'm not gonna be re-fertilizing this guy today because it's only been about six days, but we will be re-fertilizing the Regii because they need much more nutrients than any other Drosera. Let's look at the other Adelaide. Okay, so here is our other Drosera Adelaide. If you guys can see it, let me know in the comments if you guys saw it before I point it out to you now. But it's super tiny and the reason why we barely ever talk about it is because it's so super tiny. So let me put the magnifying glass on for you guys. Oh man, it's so fuzzy. There we go. This is the other Drosera Adelaide. You can see that it has its very first leaf coming out. It's first leaf with tendrils. And I think that the reason why it's doing so much better now is because we obviously got rid of all of those 
fungus gnats. So it's able to develop its roots better and its leaves better right now. So it's obviously putting out its first little trap. Let me see if I can just twist it around for you guys. So here we are from the other direction. There we go. Come on. Camera struggling, it's picking up all the wrong things. Yeah, sorry guys, I can't get this into focus, it's not gonna work. But I'll just put it back to how it was earlier. But there you guys can see it over there. Yeah, and as you can see, it's obviously growing well. So that's probably because of the fertilizer or because of the lack of the fungus gnats now. But we will find out in two weeks with the bigger plant if the reason why it's growing so well now is because of the fertilizer or if it just dies off because of the fertilizer. But I don't think it will die off. Now let's look at our regia. So here is our red regia. It is obviously just a random seedling and it turned out to be nice and red, which is, you know, obviously great because it'd be nice to have a dark red regia. It's not very common to have such red ones, but yeah, we can only just hope and pray that it stays like this. So let's zoom in for you. There we go. You can see there's, when I talk about this gray stuff in it, there, there really is, they have some dirt on them and I think this gray stuff on them is the old fish flakes. So let's turn it around so you guys can see the other side of it. There we go. That's a really good view. So there you can see, obviously, it's newest leaf right in the center. And it's um, two old leaves on the left and the right. And it's, what is it, first leaf that had um, the fish flakes that we fed it. So it looks really, really good right now. And we will be re-fertilizing it. We kind of want the fertilizer to be kind of like a soil drench for these guys. Because they do benefit, Drosser Regia do benefit from having nutrients in their soil, but I don't want to put Osmocote pellets in because firstly, I can't really find the, the perfect, the right type to use for them. And also I don't want to put them in their own pots. And if the liquid fertilizer does the job, then why not, you know? So it looks really, really good to this red one. And let's show you guys the other one. The other one looks super, super strange, guys. Okay, so here is our other regi. You can actually see a little insect crawling on it and that is a springtail i think it is i'm pretty sure it's a springtail because there are small little white isopods and they are harmless to the plants they're actually many people say they help the plants but i don't like them because they make craters in our soil and i don't know why people like them so much or maybe i'm just wrong but every time i've had springtails they make craters in the pots like in our drosser rotundifolia pots i'll show you it now but there's like tiny little craters starting to form and I really, really hate it. And the only reason I can think that there are craters is because of these springtails. Even though many people say they're good, but you know, they're making, they're making craters on, on our soil. Anyway, let me show you. There we go. So obviously that's its old fish flake and in the center you can see its newest leaf. But I can't see it's, you know, if it's making a developing leaf or not, if it's, you know, I can't see the crown of the plant really. If I turn it around, hopefully you'll see what I mean. Our camera is just like not working anymore. What the hell? Okay, let me try to fix this, guys. Let me... Yeah, I have no clue what happened there. I just switched off that video, that clip. Try it again. So, yeah, let me try find this guy on the... The micro... The... Mic, what is this? So, let me try find this guy with our lens again. See if it works. Come on now. Hey, guys, it's just not happening. Come on. Okay guys, I cannot get it any better than this. The camera's just not working with me, but you can see it there in the middle while the camera zooms in and out by itself. Essentially, what's going on is that there is one big leaf in the center of the plant and I cannot see the crown of the plant. It's like, it's like the, this big leaf in the middle is like growing straight from the center and there's no center part of the, of the plant. It's, it's very weird, but I cannot explain it to you guys and I can't show you guys. I'm really sorry about that. The camera just won't cooperate, but we will fertilize them real quick right now. And then we will look at our rotundifolia. Okay, so let us fertilize this big red one first. And this time I will be very sure 
to actually let you guys see the droplets because obviously as we all know last time a big ass hand got in the way so let's do this so that was about eight droplets i'm pretty sure that, that has gotten to the roots let's now get the other one on camera here we go as i say it looks like like gray rubbish but we will also give it about eight drops There we go, that should be a good little bit of a soil soak for them. And we can now put them back outside with the others without having to worry about the nutrients leaching into the soil and killing all of our other plants. Now for the big test, guys. We have our Drosera tandifolia here. And obviously, we don't really know if our plants are growing because of the fish flakes or because of the liquid fertilizer. These are our biggest seedlings out of every single other Drosera that we have right now, besides the tubers but they are doing their own thing. These are the biggest seedlings that we have. And before I get started, look at all the like tiny little craters forming on the surface, little bumps and ridges everywhere. And it gets super, super bad. It got much worse than, than this in our old collection. There were big craters in the soil. It looked like the moon's surface, it really did. And I can only assume that it came from the springtails eating away at the old stuff on the surface. I have no other idea how it would have came up. But anyway, we have this Drosera here and this one over here, which are about to be the same height. I don't want to really mess with this guy because, you know, he has his own issues. He can't, he can't even, you know, penetrate the soil. Um, yeah, he's doing something very, very weird. But we have this one and this one that are pretty much the same size. So what I'm going to do is I will feed this one down here a couple fish flakes because it is more dewy and I'll feed it on, you know, just one or two of the leaves and using this needle, I will put a couple droplets of the liquid fertilizer on two or three of these traps on this one so that we can really, you know, almost really quantify the measurement that we're giving to both of them. We're putting a, a decent amount on each trap and not covering the whole plant in liquid fertilizer over here, but only having the traps get the fish flakes over there. And in about a week's time, we should be able to see which one of the two are growing quicker. And obviously we'll be able to tell, hey, you know what, the fish flakes works better or it's the liquid fertilizer that works better. So first we will start off with the fish flakes. Okay, so here's our first fish flake. Try a little bit more on that same track. Okay, here we go. Here's our next little piece. So now that leaf is fully covered. And let's do the other trap. So this trap already has something in it. So I'll put it on this trap over here. And there we go. So that is it for the fish flakes. And now let's put some liquid fertilizer in the next biggest trap right over here. There's like a little bit of a colony going on over here because I obviously dropped a lot of seeds all at the same time in the same spot, which is very annoying, but it's very difficult to control. So let's us get some liquid fertilizer onto these guys. And you can see that little, little guy running around there, springtail. So let's put it on here. Okay, that's it. So drop it on each. I'm gonna suck this, this drop it back up a little bit. And move it over, over on, onto the actual leaf itself. Okay, that's a little bit better. So there we go, guys. We have a droplet of liquid fertilizer on two of the traps, and we obviously have fish flakes on two of the traps as well. So there we go, guys. I really hope that we will be able to get some definitive results from this little bit of an experiment that we're doing together. I would love to do lots and lots of different experiments on our plants to see what types of different ways we can get them to grow. There's a lot of different ways that we can grow our plants, especially some Saracenias and Venus flower traps in purely sand. Um, our subscriber Richard Davin has talked about this a lot and I really want to give that a try but obviously we can't right now we don't even have any plants that are any decent size and we can't get Saracenia at our shops it's really it's really really weird because in South Africa you could go to a shop and you know even well there was only one there was only one nursery but that nursery had stock and there were other retailers who sold the Saracenias um, that I obviously I knew them and I could easily get to them but right now I don't yeah I can't get some Saracenias so we will just have to wait for our Saracenia seedlings to grow up a little bit yeah I really hope that this experiment will be fruitful so if you guys want to see the updates on that if you want to see how their growth changes in the 
coming weeks. Uh, please subscribe to the channel because I will be doing an update on them. I, I really do try to update you guys on everything that's going on so far. Our Adelaide does not have any more gnats in them. I really feel like that they're going to start exploding in growth now because they need to grow up and actually kill the adult gnats so that that never happens again to them. And they're looking really good so far. So if you guys found this video helpful, if you found it informative, if you found it entertaining, whatever it is, please remember to like the video. And if there's any other topics you want me to address, something that you want me to try out with you guys, something to talk about, anything like that, please let me know. I'll be very, very happy to talk about any topic that you want me to. And let's go put these guys back now. Guys, I actually nearly forgot. We just fed the plants. We need to put on a time lapse. So yeah, luckily I actually remember that. I will do a time lapse on our little rotundi folias here. I will try to zoom it out so we can see both of them moving at the same time. And you should be seeing the little, um, the little springtails running around on the surface as well. So let's see how they react to those droplets. I assume that the plants will move very, very little bit because there is actually no movement on the leaves, nothing to stimulate them to close. So let me do a quick time lapse on that and it'll be like 30 seconds for you guys. Okay, and there you go guys, that was the time lapse. I do not think there was any movement at all in that. But what I did notice when I looked at it up close, which obviously I can't show you guys because the macro, the, the lens is not powerful enough. And obviously, as you saw, it just won't focus. What I noticed is that on the fish flakes, which when we put on were very dry, after 12 minutes, they are now getting moist, like wet. So what's is obviously happening is that the plant, the sticky jute droplets have obviously touched it, made it wet, and they're starting to, what is the word, realize that there is now food on the leaves and it's secreting digestive enzymes. And I can physically see that on the fish flakes because obviously when it's wet, it changes colors. So I assume the same thing is happening with the droplets. Obviously it's all droplets, so you can't really tell. But yeah, that is that is something that I just observed right now. So seeing as that we have just fed them, done our time lapse and everything, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.